skill to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and deed. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I found a need of him to be my savior. That he would leave his place on high and come for sinful men to strange so once did I before I knew my Savior my Savior loves my Savior lives my Savior is always there for me my God he was my God he is my God he is always gonna be my Savior loves my Savior lives my Savior is always there for me my God he was my My strength, my solace from this spring, that he who lives to be my king, once died to be my savior, that he would leave his place on high, and come for sinful men to die. You counted strange, so once did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He works, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there. Stands one who is my savior. Good morning. Good morning. Can we, there we, okay, we're good. Now, good morning. There we go. Because, you know, you can't hear me otherwise. It is great to be with you all as we gather in worship this day and we go through this season of Lent, a season of remembrance and a season of walking ever closer to God and to the cross. Uh, Did anyone see God at work this week that they want to share in? No, I had a couple. Uh, One of them actually just happened this morning. The third and fourth graders were on a treasure hunt and apparently they went all searching for a goodie, for goodies, and couldn't find any, right? Yeah, there wasn't, I know, horrible. And then what happened? I know, right? How cool is that? So if you didn't get to hear that, because, you know... Um, they were, they were looking for, for treats. They couldn't find any. So I knew uh, one of our after-school kids on Friday. Right now, she's the only one there. And she made cookies for our cat class kids who aren't here this morning. Um, Why? Well, yeah, I, well, I'll tell you, that's my other God sighting. So I took some to the, the third grade room. So 
awesome. You guys got to share, and she got to share her gift. So very cool. Thank you for sharing. And that is the other God sighting is, yes, if you walk by the hall this morning, the cat classroom was empty. And the reason is, yes, we lock them up. I mean, we lock them in. <laughs> Yesterday, they went to Trinity in Reading uh, with a couple other congregations, and they gathered together to learn about food deserts, to learn about the, the hunger in our community and around the world. And so they got there at 3 o'clock last night, or 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And remember, these are teenagers, so they have not had food since. They are going hungry, and the first meal that they will have is communion at Trinity this morning. So pray for the leaders who had to put up with cranky, hungry teenagers. Pray for the parents who have to get them later. Um, but to, to hear that and to, to hear that all of them willingly went and experienced what it's like to live in, in hunger and to, to have that time. So um, it's, it's really proud to, to hear that our entire cat classroom is empty because all of them, I think, are there. Um, I invite you to rise. As we go through this season of Lent, let us sing our confession for this morning. I confess to you. I confess to you, O Lord, that I have sinned. I confess to you, O Lord, all my sin within. I have failed to live for you in the things I say and do, and have fallen short of living in your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, set me free. Oh, forgive me, Lord, I pray, and take my sin away by the cross and empty grave for my soul. Hear the good news. Even when we have done wrong, God sees the good in us. Even when we have messed up, God gives us a fresh start. God's love never runs out, and God never tires of seeking to justly restore our relationship, to engage us compassionately, and to walk with us as beloved children. Hear God say to us now, our sins are forgiven. Take us back. Take us back to the water. Wash away our sins. Welcome us, O oh Father, back to your home again. Bless your sons and daughters, and let the feast begin. Let it begin. Lord, your mercy. Lord, your mercy covers me. Lord, your mercy has set me free. You've forgiven me today, and my sins are washed away by the cross and empty grave for my soul. By the cross and empty grave for my soul. Receiving the forgiveness of sin and the peace that comes with it, let us now share that peace together. The peace of Christ be with you always.
We invite you to rise as you're able and sing with us 10,000 Easy. Never before. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for our reading, and if any of our wee ones want to go with Miss Judy, feel free to go with her for we worship. Our first reading for this morning is from 1 Peter, the third chapter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends our reading. Our gospel for the day is from Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming, excuse me, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. I think it's really interesting that this passage that we hear, our first reading from First Peter, talks about Noah. It goes back to the very beginning, but it talks about it in a different way. Because if you read through the story of Noah, it's very much a story about decimating everybody except Noah and his family and those that, you know, they saved with the animals. But in First Peter, it talks about it as salvation, as twisting it to understand that the water saved these eight people. There was a purpose for it. There was salvation through water. And God made that covenant to remind us that rainbow. I found it interesting that as I was reviewing for this morning, um, I had the news up and it was talking about the flooding going on in California. Um, some of you may know, I have may have talked about it before, but some of you may not, that uh, my dad was born and raised just outside of San Francisco. So where all of that flooding is going on, I remember going out as a child to Marin County, to San Francisco, to San Rafael, where all of that rain is coming down now. And that was part of my heritage, my history, my sort of ancestral roots from my dad's side. And so to see all of that in the midst of hearing about Noah and, and the flooding, um, 
it, it was just powerful to hear that, that this promise of God, that the flooding will not encompass everything, but yet even in the midst of it, we are called through water to newness of life. Water does cleanse. Water does offer newness. It offers hope. It offers promise. And this water, this water that flooded the earth is the same water that still encompasses the world that we still use for new life. And that those heavens at one time were opened. In fact, Isaiah later on in chapter 42 says this. He says, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when a fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations may tremble at your presence. Don't we want God like that? God, come down and smite those who are against us. Show them your power. And we're going to sit back and watch. And God goes, no, that's not how this works. In fact, it was through water that we have been given new life. It was through Jesus' baptism in water by the Jordan that he was brought into his ministry. His ministry didn't really start until that pivotal moment that we hear about in our gospel for this morning where Jesus is baptized and then gets sent out into the wilderness. The gospel of Mark is very quick to go over what happens in the wilderness. He really doesn't touch on the temptation but he's quick to bring Jesus back into the ministry aspect of it, into caring for people, into interacting and reminding them and us that the kingdom of God has come near. And that in our baptisms, we are called, we are promised, we are given new life to go and to be part of the body of Christ. 1 Peter says this, it says, Baptism now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our baptism is not an insurance policy. Now what I mean by that is, and I share this with, with couples or with families that I counsel when they get ready to, to have their child baptized, we get an insurance policy, right? We have insurance for our cars and our homes and all of those things. Yes, no, if you don't, I don't want to know because, you know. <laughs> but the reason we have insurance, the reason we have that policy is just in case, right? Something happens to the car, something happens to the house. We get it, we pay for it, we stick it in a file, and we forget about it because we don't really need it. We pay for it just in case. Our baptism is not like that. Our baptism is not an insurance policy. It's not, okay, you got your kid baptized, they're good. We hear in our reading for this morning that our baptism is a call to live differently, a call to have a good conscience that is to be used. As I tell families that our baptism is more like a gift card. Anybody get, ever get a gift card for your birthday? Christmas, something, yeah. Anybody ever forget about that gift card? Did it do you any good when you forgot about it? No. Anybody ever forget it and then find it? What do you do? All right, I got to use this, right? Hey, guess what we're doing for dinner? Yeah. Gift cards don't help you if you don't use them. Our baptism calls us to be used. 
to proclaim our faith, to live into what God offers us, this notion of this good conscience, this ability to impact the world faithfully and through love. We heard in Mark's gospel that Jesus comes down, Jesus gets baptized, and God pronounces, this is my son, the beloved. Not the Terminator. The beloved. Bound in love. Just as our baptismal promise is shrouded in our parents' love and in our godparents' love and all of us who gather to celebrate that baptism, we are all tied through water and God's word to proclaim God's grace with the world around us. That is how water saves us. That is how we are encouraged to do the same for the world. I found this really interesting. It says, He, Jesus, comes with the gospel of God, points away from himself, trusting that the longing for God to break through the heavens mean both changes for us and changes with us. When we start to think differently, when we start to put on that mind of God, that promise of God, that engagement of what would God have me do? How do I live more faithfully? How do I focus on God's grace and God's compassion for other people? We start to change. God starts to change us. God engages more in our daily lives. It is a call to seek justice, a call to find restoration in relationships and in community, an ability to practice a love that God shows us. Where Jesus comes down so that we may know the lengths that God is willing to go to for us for the world because we hear that promise that God says I will not destroy the world I will not start over like I did with Noah that's not going to happen again I'll give you lawgivers I'll give you prophets I'll give you my son the beloved to show you a path but to recognize that that path will not be easy because we will have to do the work. We are called to do the work of God. That is how God transforms us. That is how God transforms the world. It is not by vengeance. It's not by ripping open the sky and coming down in violence. It is through love. It's a reminder for us that God longingly seeks to break through, not the heavens and tear them open, but us, so that we may understand the depth that God is willing to go to for us. So this season right here of Lent these 40 days that lead us to Easter, we may want to skip over them. We want to ignore them. We may want to push by them and get to Easter, get to that celebration day that we're not there yet. Because through these 40 days, God reminds us the power of transformation. God reminds us the joy in the aftermath of going through challenging times, of allowing us to see the struggle that Jesus goes through and of offering to walk together through struggles, through transformation, through difficulty, through pain, so that we may see God's guidance, so that we may see God's promise, so that we may seek a relationship that God is offering us based on love, so that we can uplift the world, 
and point to God so that we can be invitational so others come to know the love of God by us going out and making that love known. Amen. Let you rise as you're able. And join us in singing Revolution Song.
And now let us confirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the entire world in need. God of truth, the ark of your church has room for many. We give thanks for the voices that challenge and awaken your people, especially that of Martin Luther, renewer of the church, who we commemorate this day, and for those here and now who seek renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our maker, you remember your covenant with the earth and its inhabitants. Rescue communities and creatures hurting from natural disasters. Preserve species and habitats endangered by human carelessness and disregard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our light, you know our weaknesses. Free all who govern from the temptations of power. Sustain all who work for human rights in every nation, so that one day your peace may envelop this world through your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of help, you care for your beloved children. Comfort all who are grieving, ill, afraid, in pain or in despair. Feed hungry people living in food deserts. Protect any at risk from exploitation and abuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our home, you gather your people. Grant us health and safety as we assemble. Keep us mindful of any who are homebound, hospitalized, traveling, those on our prayer list, and those we uplift now on our hearts or on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who are struggling with pain unseen. As we heard this morning, they are many and they are local and global. Those with mental anguish, with suicidal thoughts, those in unhealthy relationships, those who feel trapped. We lift up these tough issues to break the silence and to reach out to those in need that they may know they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope, you promise eternal life to your beloved children. We remember with gratitude those who have lived and died in faith. Grant that we may also dwell with you in everlasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we continue to give thanks for what God has richly blessed us with as we receive our offering for this morning. Those who are here, uh, our ushers can collect or you can give online, and those who join us online can give online or through the mail as we seek to uplift God's mission here in this place and beyond. And as we do all of that, let us hear our offertory for this morning. This is my revelation, Christ Jesus crucified. Salvation through repentance at the cross on which he died. Now hear my absolution, forgiveness for my sin. I sink beneath the waters that Christ was buried in. Please rise as you are able. 
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed in an upper room, he took bread and blessed it and said, Here is my body, broken for you. He took the cup and raised it on high and bowed his head and prayed. And then he said, My blood for you is shed a cleansing stream to wash your sins away. Here Jesus offers himself to everyone, the humble and the proud, the joyful and the grieving, the pious and the profane, those who have faith and those who only long for faith, to everyone without exception. Gathered together near and far by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set. Come and be fed. Let's prepare ourselves to receive this grace-filled meal. I stand in awe of who you are. You have overwhelmed my heart once again. My all in all, my everything. With the band and I have come to meet you here. Be exalted, be exalted in my life above all else. Be lifted up, my eyes have seen your majesty filled with wonder now my soul must sing be exalted be exalted in my life Above all else, be lifted up. Be exalted. Be exalted. You alone and no one else be lifted up. There is no
Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table, we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Repeat after me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. face to shine on you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. And be gracious to you. And be gracious to you. I invite you to be seated as we share a few few brief ministry announcements. If anybody has any, oh, Gail's already headed up here. Kristen's not here, so you don't have to fight anybody this morning. Yeah. The bulletin, we have scheduled the picnic for May 19th after worship and to celebrate the end of faith formation. And the theme, I have a theme. It's ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. And you know what that means? What do you think's gonna be at the picnic? Ice cream Sundays. Make your own. So please mark the date. We will have sign up um, eventually with more information. Thank you. As long as there's no ice buckets there, I'll be happy. Ice cream buckets. Well, those, those I'll dive into, but I mean, you know. I don't know, you hesitated. Like, I'm going to think that over. We may have to do something. Um, yes, yeah, so please uh, prepare for that. Also coming up, like the Super Bowl last Sunday, or so I've been told, our Super Bowl of caring is going into overtime. So this is the last Sunday to give, especially if your birthday was between January and June. Come on, we're falling behind. Um, someone said, well, you know, the one who counts it is in the other side. So, you know, I'm just sharing their thoughts. But... Uh, thank you to Chief Grunzig, who is here for adult faith formation. I saw people coming in late. He just is a, a blessing to have in our community and a wealth of knowledge, so we want to thank him. But also coming up, we start this Wednesday our midweek soup and bread meal. Uh, it will be in the back of the church. We invite people to sign up to bring soup and bread, and we will gather for a short time of worship and discussion. It all starts at 6 o'clock on Wednesday, so please come out and share in that, along with all of the other activities and ways to connect that are going on this week, so I invite you to participate in them as you are able. With all of that, let us go out singing forever. Oh, Steve! Speaking of Steve. overtime, the Reading Royals went over, uh, thrilling overtime win last, last night. Uh, just as a reminder, there is a sign-up sheet March 8th. That's a Friday night at 7 o'clock. If you're interested, Reading Royals, come enjoy some friends, some food, and, of course, some good hockey, hopefully. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. We invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll go out today singing forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, 
One more thank you, Justin. Thank you so much for stepping into the AV booth, which is normally manned by our youth. But since they are at a lock-in, he jumped in. Oh, and Logan. All right, training him early. I like it. Go in peace. Share your bread. Thanks. Be to God. Have a great week, everybody. Great.